Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel, it's new here, hi hello, welcome. As you read, the title of this video, the Matcha G, 100mg. This video has been like such a long time coming, I don't actually know why I haven't. I started taking the Matcha G in June I think. I actually stopped taking it in August because of the side effects, which is what I'm going to get into today. So if you haven't seen my first video on this, this is where I first started taking it on 25 to 50 milligrams. That video will be linked in the description down below and also up on the iCard over there. The highest dose I actually got to was 100 and that I didn't last very long on. The Monster Gene made me quite ill and I'm not going to say it's some really bad medication because it helps so many people. Personally, I reacted horribly to it and I had no alternative but to come off this medication. I was on 100 milligrams for around three weeks and by the end of that I had to come off it. I just couldn't function and my psychiatrist actually stopped the prescription. So I want to talk a bit about the side effect that really drove it home with me. So with that I had the issue that the really much gene, the first issue I had was a rash and it scared me. I had to stop taking it for a week, take allergy tablet. Then I started back on it and started going up again. And when I got to 100 milligrams, I noticed that my memory was actually horrific. Like I couldn't remember the most basic of things, let alone anything more complicated. It made me really sluggish, made me tired. I couldn't get up, I couldn't go do anything that I wanted to do because I was so weighed down. I want to talk about memory loss because people don't actually talk about this very much. And the only reason that I know it's a side effect is because I sat and read the Psychiatric Drug Prescription Guidelines manual to learn more about Lamotrigine. It actually does cause memory loss and it's a very common side effect and had I been told that before I started taking it I wouldn't have started it because my memory on its own is already really bad. But then Lamotrigine I started taking it and things just got worse and my memory was at a point where I literally couldn't remember what I said two seconds later with everything. It was so hard and my memory is already really bad because of the two dissociative disorders that I'm diagnosed with. Starting the Motrogene and having that side effect really, really impacted me. It wound me up because no matter what I did, I just couldn't remember things. And as soon as I raised it with my psychiatrist, it got stopped. Um, memory loss is actually a really bad side effect. You know, I just haven't seen anyone talk about it which is why I wanted to do there. It literally made me forget everything. The whole switching from quetiapine to lamotrigine while lowering the quetiapine and increasing lamotrigine at the same time. Coming down on the quetiapine really, really impacted me because I was really tired, but I couldn't switch off. Which, to anyone who doesn't know, I take a fair amount of meds. Um, they're all prescribed. Two of them are beta I I'm on two separate beta blockers. And the beta blockers, beta blockers are notoriously known for the fact that it's really hard to sleep on them. I have to take them, but because of cardiac issues, I was prescribed them while under cardiology. I was forgetting to do the most basic of things, and it just overall wasn't really a good a good situation at all. It was it was pretty horrific actually. Not being able to remember just like simple things like I changed my Facebook password and I couldn't remember what it was. I remember if I'd eaten that day, I couldn't remember like what I'd done, I couldn't remember if I went out, I couldn't remember if I'd been in bed all day. And I couldn't remember if I had my meds or not. And a side effect that I had to so when I spoke to my psychiatrist it actually did got did get stopped and I'm currently not taking the Lotrogene. I am quit tyopine still. Um I think I function quite well on but I like, at night, I, as soon as I take it, I'm pretty much asleep. But in the morning, like, I don't take quetiapine in the morning anymore and I feel like I can function pretty well during the day and um, for me that's the important thing because obviously I'm going back to uni, I have things that I have to do, I have appointments to go to, I have different things I have to do and if I was still on Lamotrigine I'm not actually convinced I would have been able to return to uni because of how bad it was affected me. The thing is with these videos, the reason I talk about medications, my experience and everything like that, the reason I talk about all of that stuff is very simply because I know there are so many people that are starting on a new meds that want to know what happens when you take meds and all the people seem to post on social media is psych meds are evil don't take psych meds i am a huge advocate for treatment and recovery i am someone who is medicated i am medicated 24 7 if i'm not on my meds i can't and it's very obvious to tell when i've had my meds and when i haven't but i haven't i can't sit and do things i can't do i literally cannot and when i do i can pretty much sit and do anything 
and not really have too many emotions toward things which some people might be like um don't you want to be able to feel is it is it meant to feel emotions good my answer is no not when you are feeling low it's the worst i'd rather feel nothing than everything and i think medication is such an important part of recovery and wellness something people have to use and i don't think anyone should be shamed for taking medication some people are therapy all the way and then you get the ignorant people who are don't take med meds are bad meds are just pharmaceutical companies blah 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 i want to say this as someone who's in the uk especially um pharmaceutical companies do not get money out of individuals they get money medications are paid for through the nhs and we pay a prescription charge i personally have got a prepayment card because i'm not exempt and i have 12 prescriptions a week but i don't agree with people being like anti-psych med trying to encourage other people not to take the med medications exist for a reason and that reason is not money this is something a lot of people will talk about and they're like oh my god she's just addicted to her meds and i'm really not the main med that i'm on that that is addictive would be clonazepam and honestly i forget to take it so i wouldn't exactly say i'm an addict i do also openly accept the fact that some people do get addicted to their meds and that's hard to add to whatever you're going through treatment exists for a reason and recovery is always possible and if that's meds if it's not meds if it's rehab if it's inpatient if it's outpatient if it's fucking electroconvulsive therapy it's a valid route of treatment i think anyone who tries to prevent others from taking actions they need to take to get better is genuinely a genuinely horrible evil i get people say to me all the time that oh you look like a drug addict you look like addicted to your meds you know you shouldn't promote using your medications because people get addicted to them and the thing is i am prescribed my medication by a psychiatrist and people are like oh no, she used to be private that's why she's got some new ads I was private over a year ago now um briefly at the beginning of this year but i am currently only under the nhs if i could afford to be i would still be on private because i i do genuinely believe private treatment is i do i openly say that but you know i'm under the nhs and yeah they uh, they whack a lot of random diagnosis on <laughs> funnily enough for me it was kind of backwards most people like oh private psychiatrist you know prescribe low diagnosis i actually got diagnosed Diagnosed more under the NHS. Um, I got over diagnosed, over medicated by the NHS, not through my private psychiatrist. My private psychiatrist actually got me off like five, six meds and took away I don't even know how many diagnoses. So for me, going back under the NHS is a very very much so anxiety provoking because I've been on a lot of meds in my lifetime and sometimes it's hard when you need to keep saying the same thing over and over again but I want to say this now and I mean it treatment is always I'm not going to sit here and slate it because different things work for people like they're like everyone tell it says to me like shouldn't you do therapy I have done so much therapy in my life that I could pretty much write a script for how, like what they were saying in a situation I've done two Two different DBT courses, an intense DBT course, I've been inpatient, I've been outpatient, I've been under crisis teams, done CBT, done CBTE, I've done just generalised talking therapies, I've had counselling, you know, I tried to do EMDR therapy earlier, I tried to do EMDR therapy last year and triggered me, it made me worse. So currently I'm under a treat, under a under a specific treatment team um, for trauma. The main thing I'm working on and the only thing I'm really working on is trauma. Trauma is the root cause of the majority of my issue and that's the one thing I have to work on. Obviously with the whole COVID-19 thing it's been so hard to get treatment but now services are opening back up again it's making things a hell of a lot easier. All I want to say is if your psychiatrist recommends medication it's okay to feel anxious about it it's okay to not know all i will say is everything is worth trying because you don't know unless you try just to reiterate again i am not currently taking lamotrigine that medication got stopped it just wasn't the right medication for me hopefully people respect that and if you are on it or if you've tried it or have tried anything else let me know in the comments i'd be interested to learn more about what medications there are what i'll consider taking that works because lamotrigine is prescribed as a mood stabilizer i don't i don't think i need mood stabilizer i think for me I need my quetiapine changing. I think my sleep tablet needs to change. Um, my antidepressant got increased because of the stress of everything that's been going on on Twitter. 
so I just wanted to say that words have impact and when you type something online you can't just delete it I just want you guys to know that no matter what you are going through you are not alone and also please be kind to each other you don't know what anyone else, someone else is going through and you certainly don't have a right to comment on their life think before you type honestly and with that I'm gonna leave this video here I yeah I just thought I'd update everyone because people have been asking how's the Lamont been going and well I stopped taking it nearly a month ago <laughs> well over a month to go um so yeah that's why i'm filming anyway i'm tired i want to go but yeah bye guys